أفلح من صلى على محمد وآل محمد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا أبا القاسم محمد أما بعد respected scholars, elders, brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so inshallah the topic for tonight will revolve around the concept which is the idea of marriage in light of the person we commemorate tonight which is Sayyida Khadija alayhi afdal salati wassalam in order to analyze what kind of woman she was and what kind of daughter she produced the characteristics of Sayyida Khadija and how that characteristics trailed on in Sayyida Fatima alayhi afdal salati wa salam and inshallah the three points we'd look at tonight inshallah first and foremost is the characteristics of what the Prophet of Islam has deemed for us to choose a particular spouse on the second level I want to discuss in reference to a particular point in which someone comes forth and says there's something called love at first sight we'd like to analyze this and look at the idea behind it and what kind of side effects this particular point may have and on the final level we'd like to look at examples from history in which particular people came forth and choose their spouses and the reason behind their choices please help me in starting tonight's topic with a loud salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam has a narration in which he states make sure you choose your spouses for the genes are very misleading in which he states make sure that you choose very carefully and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam gives us guidelines there are four particular guidelines in which the Prophet of Islam says three of which if you choose a spouse are negative and one of which should be the main reason in which you choose a spouse or a partner for life. The first and foremost in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the tongue of his prophet relates to us that a reason behind marriage first and foremost is the most common which is the beauty of a particular gender. The opposite gender may be beautiful and that may be a reason why you marry that particular gender. The second in which is the particular idea of wealth. That particular person may be of a high status that are very rich. And that may be a reason why you marry them. The third reason, he says, it, they could be from a very wealthy family. A very wealthy lineage of the sons and daughters of particular kings and queens. Or prestigious places. That's the third reason that you may marry. And the fourth reason that the Prophet Sallallahu states in which you may marry is the idea and concept of religiosity. Now let's look at these in depth. The first of which the Prophet says, if you marry solely for the reason of beauty, and this is quite important, because many people within history have fallen into that trap. Many people in history have gone because they think a particular person looks amazing. However, when they find themselves in that particular relationship, they find they have a foul mouth. They find the treatment between the two is unbearable. However, they tend to overlook it because that person has a particular attribute of beauty. The Prophet says, if you marry for beauty, I guarantee that I will make however beautiful that person is in your eyes, as not beautiful anymore. As in, even if they were the be most beautiful person on earth, if their mannerisms isn't up to scratch within the Islamic circles. If their tongue is in the best of tongues, if she has a foul tongue or he has a foul tongue, because it goes either way, do you think that that relationship will last? How on earth do you think that that particular person, whether it be the male or female, will bring up a child into the future? And this is something we're going to look at in reference to Khadija. 
What kind of character was Khadija and how did she take those characteristics and take it into Fatima al Zahra? Number one. Number two, the Prophet of Islam states if you marry for wealth, if that particular person has wealth, the Prophet says if you marry for wealth, however much that wealth will not have, it's rizq. doesn't have the bounties that you want it to have. One day it's there and the other day it's gone. Or it may not even affect you in the way that you want it to. You won't see the beauty in it. How many people do we know that are rich but are un unhappy? How many people, their wealth, they don't know what to do with it? They don't know what to do with their wealth. They're rich, they're unhappy. It says, if you marry for this particular reason, this is its attribute. If you marry for a lineage, and remember, this is a very touchy point because someone may think that, okay, lineage is a particular good lineage. No, 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 no. We'll go into depth. I'm saying if you marry solely, in the Prophet's words, for particular woman being the son of, or the, sorry, the daughter of a particular king or a queen, basing it on where you will be. Like as an example that we have, when Muawiyah goes to Ju'dah, and, she says, and he, sa he says to Ju'dah, he says, if you poison the Imam, Imam Hassan alayhi afdal salati wa salam, I will give you my son Yazid's hand in marriage. One of the conditions, therefore you see that she wanted to marry, she poisoned the Imam, look at the effect of it. She poisons the Imam in order to marry someone from a lineage, from a prestigious background, in which she can say to herself, well, you know what, I'm married to the uh, ruler of the time. She says, if you have that, your lineage or your offsprings won't be very noble. However, look at, the, look at what the Prophet teaches us. He says, if you marry solely for the purpose of religiosity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you beauty. You will see that person as beautiful in your eyes. Allah will give you sustenance and enough sustenance for you to be pleased with. And Allah says he will create your lineage to be the best of lineages. Sallu ala Muhammad wa That's on the first level. The second level, Imam al-Baqir alayhi afdal salati wa salam has a narration in which he states to us. He says, if you are giving your daughter to a man, he says, make sure he's a man of religion. Why? He says, if he's a man of religion and he loves that daughter, if he loves that female, he says, if he is religious and loves her, akramaha. He will honor her. He will put her in a pulpit, a high status in his eyes. And on the reverse angle, let's say he doesn't like her. He says he will never oppress her. Never oppress her. Look at that decision. This is Imam Baqir's wording. He says, make sure you take it to a religious person. A person, I'm not saying he has to be an ayatollah, no. A person, he prays, he fasts, he knows what's halal, he knows what's haram. That's a person nowadays looked at as religious. That's just that he knows Allah, he fears Allah. He won't do anything to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib paints this picture when he looks into marrying Umm al banin doesn't he? When he goes and he says, I want a woman that will give birth to a son, that it will be aiding my son Hussein in the 10th of Muharram, doesn't he? So he looks, تَخَيَّرُوا لِنَطَفِكُمْ He went and chose Umm al didn't he? He goes to Aqi says, I want a lady with this specific characteristics, this personality. And he chose Umm al And Umm al produced four. And look at the character of Umm al If we're looking at mother relations with her spouses, Umm al remember what we said prior to Ramadan, if anyone came to the lecture in which we talked about Umm al Umm al look at the characteristics. Remember, Umm al when she first came, her name was what? Was Fatima. She said, don't call me Fatima anymore because I can see the sons and daughters of Ali ibn Abi Talib getting emotional because they remember the, my name and they remember their mother. Do not call me Fatima anymore. Abu Fadl al-Abbas, most of his life, what did he call him, Imam Hussein? Did he call him brother? He called him my master. Goes, traits move on through the lineages. That's the mother, that's the son. Khadija and then Fatima. Let's look at the characteristics. Now, on the second level, we said we want to look at the idea of love at first sight. 
Because nowadays we are very accustomed to this particular sentence. As in, for example, this particular person or this particular female looks at a man and says that's love at first sight. Or a particular male looks at a female and says this is love at first sight. If I don't marry this particular woman now, I'm going to hang myself. I can't live with myself anymore. That's it. There's no future for me. If this particular person, I'm, we're not married. That's, let's look at this concept. Now, at first sight, at first sight, if you look at a particular person, an opposite gender, Islam, what does it tell us when you have that first glance? It says that first look that you think that first look is love at first sight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you're only allowed to look once. That look is only allowed to look once. Does that mean that's love at first sight? Is that admiration? One person likes particular characteristics, attributes about the opposite gender. The opposite gender would like particular attributes about that person. Therefore, we can't conclude with love at first sight. Love is mawadda. Love is something that's created throughout the years, memories, stuff that brings you together. What do you know about that person at first sight? What do you know about that person at first sight? That person could not even be single at first sight. That's the ideas we have to think about. There's a lot of negative incultations in which we can look at that first sight. That's why it may be haram in so many instances, and that's why you're only allowed to look once. So therefore, can we actually say there's something called love at first sight? Food for thought. Number two. Number three. And inshallah, we'd like to explore this, inshallah, and then we conclude with it. Imam Zain al-Abideen, when he looks at the right of the mother, he says one of the sentences, which is a very beautiful sentence. He starts off by saying, the right of the mother is that you know that she carried you where no one else carried you. Then he goes on to say, he says, the mother has fed you with the fruit of her heart, that which no one feeds anyone. The fruit of her heart, where no one feeds anyone. Now that's why we can look at the mothers in history. When we look at one side, we have Khadija, Fatima to Zahra. And we look at the other people that used to fight the Prophet, used to fight Ali ibn Abi Talib, fight Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. Look at their mothers. We have Akilat al Akbad, the mother of Yazid, which were in narrations, I don't want to get too much into it. But in narrations, it says that she had five different husbands. But let's look, at, let's look at the lineages. You have these beacons of light, purity upon purity. And then you have people that oppose them. There's a narration in which says we, at the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib, they said we didn't know if someone was born in halal manner or in a haram manner, meaning either the son of halal or son of adultery. We didn't know. He says, so how did we differentiate? How do we differentiate? This was son of halal, this was son of haram. How do we differentiate? We didn't know. We couldn't categorize that this was a particular reason. He says, look at this. This is not in our books, by the way. This is from the other schools of thought. They say, we used to take the child to Ali ibn Abi Talib. What happens? He says, if that child would become saddened or begin to cry, we used to know that child or that son or that daughter was a son of haram. He says, if that boy or that, or that girl would smile in the face of Ali ibn Abi Talib or begin to laugh, we knew that son or daughter was the son or daughter of Halal. Not in our books, narrating it from the other schools of thought. Meaning what? That they knew that the definitive factor between truth and falsehood is who? Ali ibn Abi Talib. Was Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad? If the fruit, in reference to Imam Sajjad, if the fruit of the heart of the mother is that which is unpure, or unpure, and that is what's being fed to the child, what kind of child will be brought up? However, if the fruit of that heart is pure, is on the path of Ahlul Bayt, is in the path in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled for us, what kind of fruit would that heart produce? Khadija, Fatima, Zahra. I need, I need not say any further because we knew, and thank you, Sheikh, for explaining to us the position of Khadija, the honorable position of Khadija. Khadija, the honest. 
Khadija, the businesswoman, the woman that came to Islam, that gave everything for Islam, that sacrificed everything for Islam, in such a state where she was, and you find at the end of Islam, she did not have a coffin, a shroud to cover her body. It was too short, the cloth that they had to cover this great lady that possessed so much. They'd cover her head, her legs would show. They'd cover her legs, her face would show. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought a cloth from heaven. That's the struggle. A person came, comes to Rasulullah, what does he say? He says, Rasulullah, I love you. He says, Istaadda lil bala. Istaadda lil faqr. He says, I love Ali ibn Abi Talib. He says, Istaadda lil bala. That's the truth, brothers and sisters. If we remember the people that died yesterday, we remember the bombing. That bombing is one of many throughout history. And like the Sheikh stated so beautifully, every single time that we are brought down, we flourish. If we look at it into context, subhanAllah, Yadallah, Saddam at the time, what did he do? He thought that he was demolishing Islam. He was demolishing the Tashayyua. He took the Iraqis to every single corner of the world running away. And he thought, you know what, I've obliterated it. No one comes to the ziyara of Abu Abdullah. Little did he know that Allah's plan was for people to migrate. And in every corner of the earth now, there's a alam for Hussein. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We know not the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we know that's what we have to do. We know what kind of people we are. We know what bala will be in front of us. And we know that this is, without a shadow of doubt, the ends for us. We are the Shia, and this is what we have had throughout history. And that's why we crave the reappearance of our Imam. That's why we want the reappearance of our Imam. That's why we have to crave it more than we say. Just, it's not just the tongue that does the work. It has to be our a'mal, our actions. Make sure your actions represent Islam. Make sure your actions bring people towards Islam. Do not go about cursing everyone, going out and having a foul mouth against everyone. That just takes everyone away. Bring people in with your mannerisms. Bring people in with your smile. That's the only reason they will start to question. Who are you? What do you follow? The Christian man we said yesterday, he, he took Ali ibn Abi Talib in his khilafah to his own court and won the case. And he says, I've seen justice on earth. I want to worship that which you worship. That's how you bring people in. With humanity, brothers and sisters. Inshallah, I end on this. But inshallah, we learned from tonight some important aspects in how to choose a spouse. How to go about choosing a spouse. What to look for in a spouse, and it's a very detailed, detailed discussion, but I touched on it in very brief with the limited time that I had for tonight. But inshallah, we can pray to Allah that he instills that we marry whoever is not married to the best of women, and the woman to marry the best of men, inshallah. Allah writes for him in this blessed night. And if you are married, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will produce for you the spouse, uh, the children, or the offsprings that will be of the time of the Imam, of the companions of the Imam, Sahib al Asri wa Zaman. Inshallah, we end on this with the Surah Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha, Tazbiqah al Salat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.